Hello, everyone, and an error occurred on... Oh, no. What'd you do, Kyle? Oh, no. Are we live? It looks like we're live. Are we... We're not We're not live on Twitter. It's okay. We'll survive. Actually. It is It is go time, Spin Rights. Thank you. There we go. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back <laughs> to another episode of the Cover One Roundup as I feverishly try to press the go live button on Twitter. It's not, go, not working. I'm assuming we're live. Hello, my name is Kyle Selegi. Jason M writes, uh, hello, boys. Hello, thank you. We're live. Right. My name is Kyle Selegi. Welcome back to another episode of the Cover One Roundup here live on the Cover One YouTube channel or subsequently wherever you listen to your podcasts. As I said, as I was frantically trying to figure out if we were live or not, I am your host, Kyle Selegi, <laughs> joined this week by David Fox, and we are going to discuss a number of topics this week. Perhaps most importantly, the Buffalo Bills playoff uh, not playoff clinching. They already did that. That's AFC right. East clinching win over the New York Jets. That is who they played. Uh, we'll talk. We're, we'll vaguely talk about that. Maybe just kind of gloss over our opinions on that because, I mean, look, it, it was a, a rather vanilla game uh, against a bad team. Any any considerable amount of time that we spent talking about our takeaways from that game is borderline irresponsible because what can you realistically take from that? Nothing. Uh, I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad that we have to do this, that we have to talk <laughs> about the Jets game. Uh, we're also going to preview the Buffalo Bills' upcoming playoff matchup with the New England Patriots. Honestly, one, as a Bills fan uh, growing up uh, in Buffalo, which is where I would argue most Bills fans grow up, um, <laughs> uh, I never thought I would see the day. Granted, I was born in 97. I started following the Bills heavily in like, I don't know, mid 2000s. Um, I never thought I would see the day where the Buffalo Bills, A, played the New England Patriots in the playoffs, <laughs> and B, did so at home. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, how the turntables have turned. Yeah. So we'll discuss that. Uh, and we'll also talk about the NFL coaching carousel, which is now fully underway. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened today, so we will discuss all of this. This is this is the only reasonable takeaway from that Jets game, obviously. Spin rights. We failed to get 44 points. People should be getting fired because of it. It is I mean, Black Monday. It, 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 it is. It Black. is. Uh, <laughs> how Dable still has a job today, I do not know, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll get into all of that. So joining me this week to discuss, again, all the things I just previewed, uh, it's David Fox. David, how are you? Uh, we are doing great um, because I th I, th I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, you know, midweek, mid season, Bills were struggling, not really sure what they were as a team. Um, and there were some very odd, we'll call them odd people that were calling for Sean McDermott to be fired. Um, and on days like I today, was one of them. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, you know, when stuff like that happens, I like to save that energy for, for days like today when people who deserve to be fired are actually fired. And just think back and, and, and say, you know, what a, what a nice luxury it is to have a good head coach. Right. That the, takes the, you to the playoffs four out of five years he's been a head coach. Oh, right. There have certainly been times as a Bills fan where you look forward to this day, but for the reason where it's like, finally, we're getting rid of Dick Duran or Chan Gailey or whoever. <laughs> but like now you look forward to it because it's the start of the playoffs. It's That's right. It's a strange, not sure I'm used to it yet. Not sure I'm used to the Bills being good, <laughs> but we'll talk about all this. But before we do that, this show and cover one in general are brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is a relatively new uh, fantasy sports service that we have partnered with here at Cover One for this season on the Underdog Fantasy app. You can do daily fantasy, player props, uh, parlays, all that good stuff that you want out of your daily fantasy. You can do that at Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code COVER1 for a free $10 off a deposit of $25 or more. Again, that is promo code COVER1. Hell of an ad read if I do say so myself. Maybe Always perfect, Kyle. Thank you. Uh, we did start out um, a, a little shaky a couple weeks ago when I had to start doing them uh, because Rob's always the uh, Rob uh, is a is a sports better because he doesn't live in New York and he could legally do that. Uh, so well, well now, 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 now I can do it. Uh, things but, have changed, right? Uh, so Rob used to do the ad reads, 
and then I would uh, just kind of go through my notes and try to organize the rest of the show as I went. Uh, so now I just have to do everything on the fly, and we are killing. <laughs> uh, so before we get into, again, I don't want to talk about the Jets game, so I'm going to uh, punt it. Uh, we're going to do the Roundup Roundup. This is the segment where we talk about the latest Buffalo Bills news, rumors, and um, other things uh, in a quick roundup fashion. And again, as I said off uh, the top of the show here, it is Black Monday here in the NFL, here in the NFL, as though we are in the NFL. We represent the <laughs> NFL. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, executives, coaches lost their jobs today. Most of them uh, earned uh, I, I would say deserve to be yeah. fired. Um, one in particular was like, hmm, odd. Um, so we are going to just run down these moves, uh, talk about how they impact the Bills, because this is a Bills show after all. Uh, so Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are out in Chicago. Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman out in Minnesota. Brian Flores out in Miami. Dave Gettleman uh, retires in New York. Uh, was, was there any other moves happening today? Uh, as Hen Dog Twenty Four here points out, Anthony Lynn, former Buffalo Bills, Bills uh, legend, interim yeah. head coach, and if you if Jason Lock and Four is to be believed, former Bills actual head coach, uh, along with former Buffalo Bills defensive coordinator Gus Bradley. Um, right. Of course, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it, I, I haven't seen anything else super major i know the giants kept or are at least leaning towards keeping joe judge which is um, incredible a, a great decision truly the the man is so talented to have held up this grift for so long i understand it's only been two years but it feels like he's been there for a very long time and maybe, maybe it's just because the giants have just like had the same season like six seasons in a row mm -hmm. it seems since like, winning the super bowl right? <laughs> it's just like the i i can barely separate the the colossal failures of ben mcadoo versus pat Shermer versus joe judge i guess i think joe judge might be the most embarrassing of those three honestly Whoa. just because just of the way he thinks he is so much better than he actually is he truly, I, I, I a think real he Brandon really believes. Staley, am I right? Uh, <laughs> he just, he, I, I think he really believes everything that he says about like this culture that he's building that no one really likes. Apparently, it, it, I, there's so much about Joe Judge that astounds me. Um, but of course, the the most interesting part is the fact that he ran a quarterback sneak on third and nine from his and that he still has a job that that is with, still pretty with former buffalo bills legend jake from mm. jason taylor right six or seven head coaching <laughs> openings i don't see dable getting any of them we'll get into this we'll so into i i do want to talk about how this relates to the bills because these openings do relate to the bills in two ways one the miami opening uh because the bills will play whoever they replace Brian Flores with twice per year, uh, presumably, uh, assuming, you know, they, they keep this coach around for a little bit. Um, and, and also, the Bills are now a good team, as I said. I'm not used to the Bills being a good team. And the thing that comes with being a good team is that other teams look to you and look how you built the roster and try to replicate that success. And how do they do that? Uh, they steal your executives so, yep. or they steal your coaches. So uh, Joe Shane has already been uh, reportedly uh, the Giants have asked to interview him uh, to uh, fill their GM vacancy. Uh, Leslie Frazier, last time I checked, is the odds on favorite to get the Chicago job, which is crazy. And Brian Dable has been in the uh, head coaching, you know, world here sphere for a couple of years. So it looks like. Uh, the Bills are going to lose at least one key piece to that front office slash coaching staff this cycle. I mean, because you got Frazier getting buzz, you got Dable getting buzz, and you got Joe Shane getting buzz. Uh, they lost Dan Morgan last year, but this year they might lose the actual assistant or the primary assistant plus one of their coordinators. So, uh, David, we'll, we'll start here before we get into the Dolphins because the Dolphins talk might get a little off the rails, uh, yeah. the Brian Flores talk. So. Yeah. Um, do, do you expect the Bills to lose anyone this offseason? And if so, who and where? Yes. Um, I was I was pretty shocked last year when they didn't lose Dayball. They didn't lose Frazier. They ended up losing Dan Morgan to the Panthers. 
So he became their assistant GM. I was, I was very surprised that nobody ended up leaving um, this year. I think it's going to be very different. I think it seems like Leslie Frazier is pretty much a lock for Chicago, and that will probably be pretty good for them uh, just to give them a certain level of stability. And, and Frazier is somebody that like a lot of people really respect. And I think a lot of players respect somebody like Leslie Frazier. Um, it'll be interesting. The, the big thing with – um, like coordinators getting hired from your favorite team. It's not just, okay, we need to uh, find a replacement for this guy. It's also, he's probably taking other assistants with him, mm. right? Like we can talk about Brian Daywell leaving and how theoretically there's a, a, an easy succession with Ken Dorsey being promoted to offensive coordinator. Um, that might not happen if Leslie Frazier says, I want Ken Dorsey to be my offensive coordinator. Right. And, you know, Ken Dorsey could be like, hey, I just want to stay in Buffalo. I want to work with Josh Allen, blah, 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 blah. Maybe that's the case. Right, but then you got um, like but, Chad Hall who might go elsewhere. Like, there's, right. I mean, Chad Hall is somebody yeah. who I think, I mean, this is probably more just my opinion than anything else, but I think Chad Hall is uh, probably a, a fast up and comer in, in terms of coaching because he's mm -hmm. done a great job with this. I'll be a lot of veteran receivers, um, but he's, I mean, he's also helped Gabe Davis turn to the guy that he is. He's helped Isaiah McKenzie have a role as a receiver, as an actual receiver on this team. Um, so I, I, there's definitely something with, with Chad Hall as well. So uh, th this is, this is the, uh, the, the reality of being a successful team. Like you said, people want to replicate it and they do it by stealing your guys. Mm -hmm. um, and the bills have been, very, very lucky and fortunate that that hasn't happened until this particular offseason. Um, so it'll be interesting. Um, I think Leslie Frazier is for sure the odds on guy in Chicago. It kind of feels like that rumor has been floating around for a while now. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he certainly has familiarity in that division because being the former Vikings head coach, um, he, you know, it, it's weird bringing on a retread. Um, but I think he's definitely somebody who deserves that second shot, just given mm -hmm. the given the success that this defense has had since him and McDermott have teamed up in Buffalo, and in particular this year where they've just been so dominant. Like it's just uh, yesterday was just another example of that absolute train of a defense plowing through everybody on the Jets' offense. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm 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 interested in seeing that um, and. I haven't seen who the Bears are considering for a GM. Um, so I'm guessing it doesn't involve anybody from the Bills. Um, yeah, at least not yet. We'll yeah, have to wait. But, but as far as the Giants and Dave Gettleman, it's not that surprising that they're kind of looking for somebody from that same sort of tree. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Brandon Bean used to be the assistant GM in Carolina under Dave Gettleman. Um, so it's not that surprising that they want to get somebody who – is sort of similar in the line of thinking, but probably better in terms of actual, you know, doing the right thing. <laughs> um, you know, Dave, Dave, Dave Gellman gets thrown under the bus a lot, and he deserves a lot of criticism for, for various things throughout his career. I still think he's a really smart, like, football mind and a football. Just, just he, he knows how to scout guys. I know that. I believe that. Um he just has a hard time managing a roster year to year and managing cap space and, and understanding value in particular. I think there's just guys that he gets really locked into. And it's just like, I have to get this guy. This is my guy. I need this guy on my team. And to an extent, you kind of see that with Brandon Bean as well, um, where they, like, they have their guys, but they just seem more prepared for when those guys don't land their way. Whereas Dave Gellman just seems like he has no clue what to do when plan A doesn't work. Um, I think you saw that in this past draft when you had the uh, Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles picking three in a row. Uh, the Cowboys traded back with the Eagles. The Eagles traded up to the Cowboys spot. They picked Devontae Smith, who was clearly who the Giants wanted because they immediately traded out, <laughs> traded back, which Dave Gellman never does. And they didn't get a great return on it. I mean, okay, you get an extra first round pick this year. That's not nothing. That's 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 good. But it's like you kind of had Chicago by the horns here, and you just kind of let them off a little easy. 
uh, and especially a desperate another desperate GM in Chicago, Ryan Pace, who was also now fired. So it, it, he he he's had his his issues, um, and I'm sure the uh, decision for him to retire is probably more forced than anything else. Um, I, I'd be surprised if we saw Dave Gettleman in anything more than just an advisory role for the rest of his time in the NFL. In Buffalo, senior <laughs> pocket <laughs> jokes, hopefully. Um, but uh, I, the, the New York job is interesting to talk about here because if, I mean, uh, as Jason Taylor wrote earlier in chat, I already put it on screen, but about Dable. Dable's kind of, I, I feel like he's not the hot name. He was the hot name last year and he didn't get a job. Yeah. Now I feel like he's kind of not really, I mean, he's, his name is still being brought up and not as much as it was last year. If Joe Shane gets that Giants job, I think Dable might be a lock for the for the head coach job. I mean, but for 2022 or 2023, because it seems like they're ready to keep Joe Judge. And if that's the oh, case, you're right. You're right. What, the job's not what open. GM Never mind. Is going to take that job? Never mind. When, when they have to be strapped to Joe Judge for a year. I forgot. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that, that, the, wait, the Giants make love, less sense than I thought. Love, okay. love this idea, Jason. Whatever. Love uh, this. So, Get him, 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 and Doug Whaley. Let's team them up. Oh boy! Hey, hey, the XFL, <laughs> man. What about the USFL? Uh, that. Oh God, that makes sense though. Um, but yeah, Frazier. Uh, who? Uh, yeah, Jonathan wrote in chat. But as Frazier mentioned, wanting another shot at a head coach job uh, last year, I didn't get the impression that he wanted to tr- or he wanted to try it again. I vaguely remember there being a, a press conference or something years ago. I think it was after McDaniels um, said no to the Colts. He had been announced and everything, and then he was like, actually, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, And then Frazier interviewed with the Colts. Um, So, Mm. uh, yeah, and then they interviewed a bunch of guys. Frazier was one of them. And I think there was a press conference afterwards where he was asked straight up, like, do you want to be a head coach again? And he said, yeah, I I would like another shot at it. Um, but, But like last year, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Like, I know he was. I know he was interviewed. And I th- I thought he was like a lot to get the Texans job after they went through all their chicanery, <laughs> um, and then they ended up hiring David Culley, which like kind of weirdly didn't fail as bad as we all thought yet, he was going to. Would, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I I I I'm I don't I think Leslie Frazier wants another shot as head coach. Um, I mean, and who wouldn't? I mean, mean, there. I'm sure there are some people who like, especially after like, if their second time doesn't work out, they're probably like, okay, I can't do this again. (laughs) Um, But I think there's there's just guys who, you know, that first time around, it's really hard. And he became the Vikings head coach because Brad Childress got fired, and he was the interim coach and did fairly well as the interim Mm -hmm. coach, and he ended up getting that job. And I mean, he had he had some success with. with the Vikings as that head coach, he just, you know, stumbled along the, the way and he didn't make the playoffs. And, and <clears throat> I think the big thing was just the fact that they didn't have a quarterback in Minnesota that they felt confident. I mean, they drafted no first. Christian Ponder slander. <laughs> I won't accept Christian Ponder slander on the podcast. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> it's not uh, going to happen. I mean, Better, better Vikings quarterback under Leslie Frazier, Christian Ponder or Joe Webb? Joe Webb, but <laughs> <laughs> Joe Webb's an elite quarterback, though. You can't, that's a ridiculous question, and you know it. Never forget uh, the overtime game against the Colts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope Frazier, like, I think there's a, a realistic possibility that the Bills end up losing all three of these guys, as people have said in chat, uh, or and by the three guys, I mean Shane, Frazier, Dable. But at this point, it is looking more likely, reading the tea leaves or whatever, that Frazier is going to get another shot at a head coaching job, probably in Chicago. 85 Bears, right? You can sell that quite easily. Yeah. So, like, uh, I don't know if I love that for him. Like I kind of, we need to move on, but I, I, I kind of just want Frazier to go to like a Jacksonville, just go to somewhere that needs an adult in the room. And, and you know, like he can just go and not be bothered by the media, not be bothered by anyone and quietly build a nine and eight or 10 and seven perennial team 
and they don't bother anyone and they occasionally make the playoffs. I don't want him to go to Chicago where like, you know, the media is going to be out to get him and like, Oh, Justin Fields deserves better. Like I, eh. I mean, honestly, I think after Nagy, pretty much anyone coming in there is going to probably feel pretty good at least at first. Um, Cause it, it, Matt Nagy was just such a disaster by the end of this. I mean, it, was, it was getting like really bad. Um, but I think someone like Leslie Frazier just uh, the, the thing I just think of when I think of Leslie Frazier as a head coach, just like stability. I think a team like Jacksonville definitely needs that. And he would, that would probably be a better fit for, for him. But I think Chicago is also a really good place for him. And if he brings, you know, Ken Dorsey or someone else that he's familiar with along to be the uh, coordinator on offense, I think that will be like a huge boon for uh, Justin Fields. And Justin Fields is an exciting player. That would be hard to sell me on, though, if I were a <laughs> Chicago fan and you sold me on Leslie Frazier and Ken Dorsey. I'd be like, that's that's how we're turning this around. This is who you're getting for my franchise quarterback. Did, and did, like, I understand, like, oh, you want Trevor Lawrence to have Leslie Frazier and <laughs> uh, Ken Dorsey? Ken Dorsey. Like maybe more than I want Justin Fields to have him. I don't know. Here's here's let, let, let me paint it this way. How many people, especially Bills fans, really felt like Sean McDermott and eventually Brian Dayball were like the combination to get the Bills over the hump that and is into true. the you know deep postseason type of type of talk. Right. You you won't know unless you try. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I said. Before the podcast, I was like, I want this to not go long because the national championship is at eight o'clock and I don't want to, I'm not competing with the national or I don't, I don't want to burden the national championship and have, they have to go up against the cover one roundup. That's yeah. uh, an impossible ask. That's for wrong. That's so, just wrong on our part. Right. I was going to do them a favor, but it looks like we might be pushing. So we're going to move on. We were going to do Brian Flores talk. It was a stupid fire. That's, that's my takeaway. He'll get a head coaching job. Okay. <laughs> Bill's jets talking point. As I said uh, earlier in the show, uh, I just wrote down Bill's Jets talking points. I, I, I didn't even write takeaways in my notes. I didn't even refer to them <laughs> as takeaways. They're talking points. It would be silly to, to spend a lot of time or like put a lot of stock into anything that we saw in this game because it was a game that you would expect out of a team that is already qualified for the postseason uh, and they just kind of wanted to get through the game. Obviously, they needed to win, but they were playing the Jets. So uh, they, they, they kind of thought they would do that by default, I assume. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into this here, uh, just talking points, and then we will do a little uh, a little bit of a playoff preview. So my first talking point, <clears throat> flash takeaway, if you want to call it that, from this Bills 27-10 to 10 win is that the Bills put up 27 points in a game where – that was like it, winning was obviously their priority, but like they didn't want to show anything in the process of winning. Yeah. I, I don't think it would be unfair to describe the game plan as pedestrian. Uh, but again, it's it's the game plan that you would expect uh, given the circumstances again, win, but you're playing the worst team in your division. One of the worst teams in your conference, don't put anything creative or, or unorthodox on tape, just kind of get in there, win and whatever. Uh, and you saw that on the first drive when the offensive strategy or not the first drive, I think it was the second drive, but still the offensive strategy in the first quarter was get the ball to digs. Uh, and yeah. I, I was like, he has to have like an incentive bonus here. Mm. There has to be something. Uh, we have Russian bots in the chat, dude, this is electric Fine. every week. <laughs> uh, like, I was like, okay, he they've targeted him like eight times already. He has to have an incentive. I looked it up. Of course, he was like six receptions away from mm. like a, a $750,000 bonus or something. There you go. Uh, and he got it. So good for yeah. you, Stephon Diggs. Josh Allen likely ate well last night on, <laughs> on uh, Stephon Diggs' dime. But um, yeah, but again, just the game plan was pedestrian. Don't want to put anything on film. And even talking about this game plan, uh, or, or looking at this game plan, it was sloppily executed. Allen had, was 24 of 45 for 239 yards, uh, a few errant throws throughout the day. Uh, there was one drive in particular where he had miscommunications with his, uh, I just said that so weirdly, miscommunications uh, <laughs> with his receivers, I think on back-to-back-to-back plays. Uh, yep. They all ran option routes, and they chose wrong every yeah. single time uh yeah Alan I, I, read it wrong I, I mentioned this in in my recap yesterday just or from this morning rather 
uh, that you know th- those three straight plays were really frustrating because a lot of the, a lot of this offense is based around option rounds, and that's mm-hmm. why you get guys like Stephon Diggs and Cole Beasley who are just like really smart and know how to do that. Um, but when there's miscommunications like that, it looks really really bad. Um, probably worse than it actually is. Um, and especially when it happens three straight times in a game where it's already a lot of frustrating offense going right. on, it, it kind of just boiled down to like, uh, why, why are we doing this right before the playoffs? Right. And, um, and, yeah. And then going off that, I mean, the Jets defense statistically poor, but yesterday played the Bills really tough played a a really strong game against the bills uh the bills punted seven times yesterday matt if you can call it that right (laughs) the bills attempted to kick the ball to the jets uh on fourth down on seven occasions that's the most punts they've had all year so obviously uh not a great offensive game plan had 13 points entering the fourth quarter but again they find a way to score 27 even given all the negatives I just listed, not a career, an intentionally uninspired game plan, sloppy execution of said game plan, good defensive out or not, or, you know, a team that is punching up quite well, a, a team that is L or effectively playing up to you. Maybe you're playing down to their talent level, you can mm-hmm. say, but a team is, is matching you. Uh, the, the Jets yeah. were playing well defensively. All that being said, they still sort uh, score 27 points. And, um, yeah, I'm not necessarily concerned about anything offensively. I did see some people on Twitter being concerned about the offense. And like uh, I think Jason wrote in chat here, Allen, two underwhelming passing performances to close out the regular season. Very true. Last week was not good from Josh Allen. This week wasn't good from Josh Allen. But all of that being said, I'm not concerned just given, again, all the circumstances I listed, and they still scored nearly 30. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is, and and especially divisional games are always weird like this. Um, and weirdly, like the Jets have given the Bills like a fair punch every time they've played them the last two years. Mm-hmm. They've still the Bills have still beaten them fairly soundly every time, but the Jets have given them pretty pretty solid punches every time. Um, and and yesterday, like Quincy Williams and CJ Mosley just tackled super well. Um, and it was, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It it, it is what it is. Um, like you said, 27 points in a very sloppy offensive game, whatever we're onto the playoffs. We're, we're, we're onto new England. Right. Um, as, as far my, my, my big, uh, takeaway is actually something that, uh, Lauren, 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 whatever your name is said, uh, and Oliver is still amazing. Uh, <laughs> more like just, Brad Oliver, as I wrote uh, here. There you go. Look He's at that. He's gonna get paid one day. More like Brad Oliver. Good God. <laughs> it's a good joke. <laughs> I didn't say it was. I want to see in chat. Everyone write good joke. <laughs> <laughs> But he's he's awesome. I mean, we, we, we I feel like we talk about this every time we're together. Ed Oliver is just so freaking good. Mm-hmm. That that sack that he had coming back inside on the spin move against uh former Bills practice squad player Connor McDermott. He was he was lined up at defensive end and he pulled off a spin mm-hmm. move. I mean I don't I don't care what kind of practice squad dummy you're going against. That's still incredibly impressive from an interior defensive lineman. Just he's so so good and I I can't wait to see what he does in these playoff games. Um he's I, I just feel like he's gonna have a great postseason. I, I feel it. I feel it in my bones. I mean, he come he comes on when the lights come on. Uh, that's right. I, that, that's yeah, that's evident throughout his career, and he's you know played very well most weeks this season. Uh, yeah. We, I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum yeah. how great Ed Oliver has been this year, but uh, again, he typically plays well in prime time. So we'll we'll see what he does in the postseason. Here, yesterday had five pressures, according to PFF, two sacks, two hurries, and a hit. Uh, that does equal five if you add them up. So uh, okay. <laughs> good, good on you, PFF. So uh, and just the defense in general yesterday was was uh, a strong cap off to what was an incredibly strong defensive season. Yeah. I think they allowed what, like 53 net yards, 40 yeah. of which came off the touchdown play. Yeah. And that touchdown play doesn't happen if Jordan Poyer either mm-hmm. gets the interception, which is exactly what he was trying to do. And like that close away from getting. Or he just goes for the pass breakup and it's incomplete. 
Right. Like it, it, it's 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 unfortunate that they scored on there, but like it was very close to just being another play where the Jets couldn't do anything. I mean, that's insane. That that is an incredible stat. Like fifty three is incredible. Yeah. In general. And then if you minus, I mean, I, I, I hate doing this. I hate doing that. If you take away their best play, this <laughs> right. is what happens. but if you take away the 40 from that one play, like 13 under, yards, that's insane. That that's is absurd. Wild. great defensive game yesterday. Ned Oliver, uh, leading, maybe not leading the way the defensive line, the pass yeah. rush finally showed up. What they have seven sacks, eight, sacks? nine, nine sacks. That was nine intentional. Sacks. I had to count up. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Oliver, five pressures. Boogie Basham getting involved yeah. in the pass rush, four pressures. Harrison Phillips had another strong outing with four yeah. pass rushes, or total pressure, sorry. Um, just a, a great defensive game. They finish first in most defensive categories, except the run, uh, which we will get into in a little bit. Uh, but a, a very good defensive game. Again, in a game where the offense was it, intentionally boring, unintentionally sloppy, uh, it wasn't a game you'd, thought, you'd think the defense would have to keep them in, but the defense did keep them in until the offense was right. able to piece together some drives in the in the fourth quarter and score it and put the game out of reach. So speaking of the offense, I want to talk about Devin Singletary here. He This is maybe the best stretch of his professional career. Uh, he, has, he has just stacked game after game after game here. I uh, had 19 attempts yesterday for 88 yards, one touchdown, 112 total yards. Uh, given, I think he had two receptions fourth week in a row where he said at least 15 touches third week in a row or third time in four weeks that he's had at least 20. Uh, and this is the second week in a row where he's had over a hundred total yards. Uh, he is just, I, I've said in the past where it's like Devin Singletary, I don't love him for the future, but he's the bill's best running back right now. Mm -hmm. He is showing at least right now, like if this Bills offensive line can continue to play at this level, Devin, there's no reason why Devin Singletary shouldn't have some role in this offense moving forward. It just again, angry runner, uh, still has a vision, still has a burst. Uh, probably, I, I feel like the burst has never been part of his game, but now, I mean, we started seeing in the preseason. Now it's he's got a, he's got a good burst. <laughs> that's just a weird way to put it but again he, he's developing into a, a very nice running back again there's no reason why if the line can continue to play this well and Singletary continues to produce I, there's no reason why he can't have a role moving forward a, a significant role and I do want to point out the offensive line here uh Eric tweeted earlier uh happy birthday Eric I, I know you're watching the cover one roundup um happy but birthday, he tweeted Eric I didn't know it was his birthday yeah, he tw he tweeted uh yeah you might get fired uh oh uh <laughs> He, first. <laughs> he tweeted earlier um, a, a few uh, clips of the – he tweeted a bunch of clips of the offensive yeah, line and the run game does. in general. But uh, he, he noted that part of the reason why the run game has started to find more success is the usage of jumbo sets uh, with Tommy Doyle coming yep. in as an extra blocker and then more creative formations. And you look at Doyle uh, – Hasn't really played at all except for the last two weeks, mm -hmm. but he played on 24% yeah. of the team's offensive snaps last week and 23% yesterday. Ryan Bates has also been a revelation at yeah. guard. Morse, I mean, Morse has always been good, but now he's getting the recognition for being good. This offensive line is really stepping up uh, in, in pass protection and run protection, and yeah. uh, Devin Singletary is one of the benefactors of that. Yeah, they've the, the, the offensive line has been really good the last couple of weeks. Um, Ryan Bates is like – like. The, we, I feel like it's been talked about with Ryan Bates before. Like he's been on this team for a while, for a couple of years now, and they've kind of been hesitant to to call him up and use him, uh, even when things were getting kind of hairy. Mm -hmm. um, and at a certain point, it was like, okay, why do you have this guy in your practice squad developing for the last couple of years if you're just like never going to let him see the field? Right. Um, like at a certain point, you got to see what this dude is. And it turns out he's actually pretty good. Um, he, he's, he's played pretty well. Um, and, and after Ike Bucker went down against New England, I was like, Ugh. just when things seem to be gelling right. for this offensive line, just like, you know, of course that would happen. Brian Bates stepped in and he's, he's, he played some good ball for them. Um, obviously, uh, Spencer Brown, just, a another bully who just loves killing people. Uh, Daryl Williams has been very, very solid at guard. Deion Dawkins has been fantastic at left tackle the last two couple weeks mm -hmm. um he has been really really good and it's good to see him more back into form 
Uh, and Mitch Morse is Mitch Morse, and we know he's uh, he's he's fantastic and just like a rare specimen at center who can do just really unique things. So it, it's it's great seeing this offensive line come together and playing well when they really need him need them to to, to play at this level. Um, and as far as Singletary, um, you know he's he's obviously playing well. I think what is interesting about him in relation to the rest of this Bills offense is you have guys like Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, Cole Beasley, Manuel Sanders. All these guys are very good receivers. They're not great after the catch. Stefan Diggs is like good, but it's not his strength. He's a like super precise route runner, super strong hands, wins at the catch point. It's fine after the catch. Um Guys like Cole Beasley, Gabe Davis, Emmanuel Sanders at this point in his career, they're not yak guys. The two guys that can get yards after the catch or after contact are Dawson Knox and Devin Singletary. Um, And that is absolutely needed. And it's great seeing the Bills have more trust in Devin Singletary and Singletary like just sort of seeming and feeling and playing more confidently. Um and I think that's really translating well for 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 him and for this offense as a whole. It's 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 good to see, and it's very necessary moving into the rest of the playoffs. Speaking of the rest of the playoffs, I'm going to trust that everyone can hear me and see me because my Wi-Fi just told me that it was out. So uh, I'm assuming that you're you're, you're good here. <laughs> we might be talking to no one right now. That's, that's <laughs> hell of a hell of an internet issue show. So. Hmm. Um, yeah, you, you had a nice segue there, a nice segue into the postseason, and, and I took it. I did take it, and then I just kind of went on a tangent. So we, we will go back to the playoffs. <laughs> um, the Buffalo Bills, again, in the playoffs, will host the New England Patriots this Saturday night. Um, they've played them once already, uh, once at that same stadium that they're going to play at this uh, this week. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about that, but um, <laughs> the Bills are 1-1 one one against the Patriots this year. The Pats finish, of course, 10-7 and seven after dropping that game to the Brian Flores-led Miami Dolphins mm. yesterday. Um, <laughs> well, not anymore, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, the, the Patriots, I think Bills fans have a pretty good understanding of what they are in general, uh, especially after seeing them twice this year. Um, they are a good team, but it's a winnable game for the Bills, as we saw, right? as we've already seen. The Bills can beat the Patriots. That being said, there are still causes for concern. Uh, Matt Judon will presumably be healthy this time, uh, so they can, you know, pr- not pre-COVID. Um, like Matt Judon obviously played last game, uh, last yeah. game, but he was a non-factor. Like there were reps when he was getting blocked by Dawson Knox. And it's yeah. like, I like Dawson Knox. I think Dawson yeah. Knox is a, a very good tight end, but do I like Dawson Knox one-on-one with, with Matt Judon? Do I think he's going to win that matchup often? No, I, I, I don't think he's going to win that consistently. Yeah. So I don't think they should do that again. Um, but with, Again, presumably a, a healthy Matt Judon. Devon Godshaw ha- has looked good against the Bills this year. Uh, Kyle Duggar. They have pieces defensively. But um, I want to focus on the offense here, the the Patriots' offense. Um, because, look, we know what the Bills' offense is. They should presumably be able to put up points against the Patriots. Uh, and if you want to talk about the, the Bills' offense at all against the Patriots, we'll do so in a couple minutes. But I want to talk about the New England offense and what I think – this game will come down to uh, whether or not the bills can win and they can, I think they have to make Mac Jones a factor. They, they have to make Mac Jones play football because it, it's obvious, at least in the two games that the bills have played against the Patriots, uh, Bill Belichick doesn't overly trust Mac Jones. Uh, again, three passes in the first time they played. Uh, and then the last time that they played uh, Mac Jones was 14 of 32 for 145 yards and two picks. Um, so he he was at best against the Bills this year a non-factor, at worst a detriment. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why they lost that second game. Uh, Mac Jones had a very bad game. Um, so I do expect, uh, just in general, I expect the Patriots to focus on the ground game here. Um, you know, because that's kind of what they do. And given Mac Jones' past struggles against the Bills, I would expect them. I would expect Belichick to try to limit Mac Jones' role. <laughs> Um, and if you look at the weather, uh, because this is going to be fun, uh, the current forecast, at least what I checked earlier today, 
Um, it was going to be, they're currently calling for like 14 degrees with a chance of snow. Uh, so there could be snow showers and it's going to be freezing. So even in general, I'd expect the Patriots to try to run the ball. And especially okay. given the uh, the game plan, or especially given the weather, I, I expect the game plan to be heavy Damian Harris, heavy Ramondre Stevenson, and some Brandon Bolden in there. Um, again, and the Pats have had success rushing the ball against the Bills. Uh, had 371 yards in the two games that they played. That's good for an average of 185 rushing yards per game against the Bills. That, that's not good. Um, that, that's that. What did I do? I just I just stuttered. I had a brain fart. Um, yeah, but the Bills need to, again, as I said, they need to make Mac Jones a factor. They need to limit big plays on the ground because that's kind of what's killed them against the Patriots is Damian Harris kind of breaking off big runs. So in order to win, uh, which, again, I, they're, they should be able to do, they need to make Mac Jones play quarterback. And I hate when people use that term about Josh Allen. Like we have to, well, like when people say it about Josh Allen, it's in terms of like, we need to keep him in the pocket. We need to make him beat right. him, beat us with his arm. But like in, in this case with Mac Jones, no, you need to literally make him throw the ball. You yeah. Literally make him a, a part of the game plan. You cannot let them run all over you. You need okay. to make Mac Jones uh, put Mac Jones in the position to make mistakes against the bills defense. And I think he will. Yeah, the first of all, Mac Jones is having a very rough like December yeah. and January. He has not played well in recent weeks. His best game came against Jacksonville, which like okay, um, but like he's really struggled in that Miami game. That was that was pretty bad. Um, I think the thing with Mac Jones, like the reason why he's as successful as he is as a rookie is just because he doesn't turn the ball over a lot because he's very safe with the ball and takes mm -hmm. a lot of short stuff. That's fine. Um, and it's fine when you have a lead and a good defense, which they, the Patriots during that long win streak that they had, they had. Um, but when you're behind, when you have to push the ball down the field, do you really trust Mac Jones in that situation? Because it sure seems like the Patriots don't. They do not, no. And <laughs> especially evident. especially against the secondary, where you have Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer doing what they do and rotating coverages and disguising things. I mean, this this, this is a, a pair of safeties that are, like, very good against quarterbacks like Tom Brady. Now, now you're bringing in a rookie. Like, I, I – I don't want to sit here and say like the Patriots are an easy win because they're not like no, it's Bill Belichick never. and a talented roster. Like this is not a wrap by even any remotely minor stretch of the imagination, but they're not like a super formidable team. And they're also not a complete roster, right? Like they're still deficient at wide receiver. Yeah. They have had, like on and off issues with pass rush. Like if Matt Judon's not getting there, then it's kind of up to Kyle Van Noy, who's fine, uh, especially as a secondary guy. But like if he's the primary pass rusher, that's a, it's not ideal for them. And you also have Christian Barmore who suffered an injury in that Miami game. It doesn't look like it's anything major, but if he is either limited in this game or just out as a whole, that's pretty big because he's been playing some really good football for them all year um, and in an important position for them too. I mean, the, any any sort of defensive, any, any one of those front seven players is so critical to how the Patriots play um, run defense in particular, but also just how they they fit things in their pass rush lanes and allow guys like Kyle Van Noy and uh, Matt Judon and other blitzers to come in and make plays. If so, if he can't go, that's a problem. That's a big problem for them. Uh, and, and it a lot, it gives the Bills offensive line, which has been playing better recently, another uh, a plus for them, essentially. It just, just allows them to, to play a little better, I think. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I am fairly confident in a Bills win, and I am sure I will regret, regret that. Um, but it's, this is what happens when you, you know, put together a, uh, a good team that has an actual quarterback, unlike the Patriots. First Christian Ponder slander <laughs> and now Matt Jones slander. No, I, I, I was kind of, 
I think your confidence is warranted, right? Because we've seen, we've seen that the Bills are likely the better team, right? When you're not playing in the middle of yeah. a blizzard, when you're not playing in the in the cyclonic center of Highmark Stadium, and <laughs> it, you know the wind's not 60 miles per hour and it's blocking field goals before it midway or you know mid right. route, uh, that is the Bills are the better team top to bottom. But again, the weather, it's. I haven't watched the weather. Sorry, I'm not 60 years old. I haven't uh, <laughs> caught the weather forecast. Um, but again, 14 degrees with a chance of snow early. I don't know. It, it's typically windy in Buffalo, um, especially in mid-January. So yeah. it's it's likely going to be windy. I, I doubt it's going to be the same level of wind as we saw last time because that was very windy, like historically, yeah. borderline historically windy. So I don't think we'll get that level of wind but it is always windy at highmark stadium just given how the stadium is constructed right the wind kind of comes in on the corner because half the stadium is underground uh, you right. know below ground level so the wind just kind of comes in catches an open corner and just kind of circles down that my hand movements are really helping they're, me they're very helpful right. for the audio listeners thank you right <laughs> uh, right yeah if so. <laughs> no close captioning for our uh, <laughs> auto or hearing impaired listeners it's just they're That's looking right. at my hands they're like, always talking about the wind at the stadium i got of course it. um so <laughs> but uh, again not going to be as big of a factor the wind but a factor uh, i'm sure so it just it just comes down to can you stop the big plays on the ground because they they are going to run the ball they're going to find some level of success on the ball or on the ground i mean the bills finished as the 13th uh, ranked running defense this year so uh, teams have found at least some level of success again or against them on the ground so i, I think the patriots are going to run it i think they're going to find some success doing so it's just can you again can the offense build a big enough lead early to the point where you need Mac Jones to play in the fourth yeah. quarter, that you need Mac Jones to to help his team win. And if you get the Patriots in that situation where they're up in a corner and they need to rely on Mac Jones, I think you've you've probably won the game. Yeah, yeah. I, and I even if they're down, I mean, they, the the Patriots could be down by like ten or seventeen in this game. Like, I mean, I'm not saying they will be. I'm just saying that it could happen if that happens. They, I could honestly still see them just running the ball as much as possible. Like mm -hmm. I don't think they will go away from the run until it is like true desperation time. And at that point, it's a wrap. I mean, they're, they're, I just, I cannot conceive of a scenario where Mac Jones finds a way to beat a McDermott and Frazier defense in a big spot. It's, I, I, I can't picture that happen. It's just, I, I, it doesn't make sense. Like, this these two guys have been so historically good against rookie quarterbacks. It, it, they're, they're good against every quarterback, essentially. I mean, it's Absolutely. hard for any team to go against this 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 defense, uh, especially quarterbacks. Every quarterback I, I, has there been like a quarterback where you're like, yes, that was the best performance uh, for for a quarterback came against this Bills defense. It's like I I, I no, nothing comes to my mind at least. I mean, Brady Davis has had Mills. It. Oh, Davis, he didn't look bad at the end of the year. He had a nice little run there. Davis but. Mills has not been bad this year. He was awful against the Bills, though. <laughs> um, but it, it it's really going to come down to how effectively they can stop this Patriots run game um, and just the kind of lead that this Bills offense can can create and, and maintain. You can mm -hmm. make a 10-point lead. That can disappear very quickly against the Patriots team that can go, you know, on a 12-play drive right down the field and score a touchdown, and then they can stop you on offense pretty easily because they have a good defense. Um, and then suddenly they're in position to to get a, another field goal and, and, and keep it tied. It, it's the, This is – the, the type of team that they are. It's tough. It's just tough. Greg is now in the chat slandering Greg. Mac Jones. Davis Mills <laughs> ended the year better than Mac Jones. Greg, what's your opinion on Christian Ponder? Can we get a, a Christian Ponder <laughs> thing in the chat from Greg Thompson? That, that's that's how we wrap up this show with Greg's Christian Ponder take. Um, so I, I think that effectively wraps up Patriots talk. I, there will be numerous cover one shows uh, throughout the week yes. that preview this Patriots team. Uh, I think we're doing a, I, I don't know if this has been announced yet, uh, but I think we're doing a, a, a big playoff preview show on Friday. So 
Uh, you, you'll hear you'll hear me reiterate these points on Friday again. So make sure you listen to that one. Um, but Excellent take on I, Christian Ponder, by the way, Greg. He married really well. Very, very, very strong point for the young Christian Ponder. Good for him. The young That's Christian tough. Ponder. He's still got potential. He just needs someone to give him a shot. <laughs> Leslie Frazier, Christian Ponder reunion in Chicago. There we oh, go. God. Uh, ooh, plus Joe Webb. <laughs> So uh, what is back. Joe Webb doing these? No, we can't get into that. We can't get into Joe Webb talk. We're going to be here I, I'm fine with Joe Webb roundup. Someone <laughs> on Joe Webb roundup, please. I will host it. <laughs> Could I host a podcast with Joe Webb? Is he at that point in his career? Will he? Will, because you you see occasionally there's like this podcast network that's built on like random former players doing a podcast with like a moderately sized. See, uh, see if you can talk to Eric about that. See if we can't can get, we get uh, Joe, Webb Joe Webb into the mix here. I will host the Joe Webb show. Well, no, Joe <laughs> Webb would host the Joe Webb show. <laughs> I will be an accomplice to the Joe Webb show. Someone <laughs> someone set that up. Um, but yeah, the, the playoffs are going on, as, as we've been talking about here. Uh, the Bills aren't the only team playing this weekend. There are a few other teams playing this weekend. Uh, I will run down the games now. We have the Chiefs versus Steelers. Oh, that'll be good. Uh, Raiders, Bengals, Buccaneers, Eagles, Niners, Cowboys, and Cardinals, Rams. David, uh, which games stick out to you? And do you uh, foresee any potential upsets here? I am weirdly intrigued by Eagles, Bucks. Ooh. Because... The Eagles' defense finds a way to give quarterbacks their best games ever, <laughs> largely because they just want to give up everything underneath. And Brady is the type of quarterback who will absolutely pick you apart and dink you, dink and dunk you down the field. Mm-hmm. But offensively, the Eagles after the bye week, the Eagles just like became the most efficient running team in the NFL. Like they just suddenly decided, Oh yeah, we can do this. So we're just going to do it. Um, And they don't even have that, like a great stable of running backs either. Like Miles Sanders is good, but he's not like consistent enough. And then they have Jordan Howard and Boston Scott, like Jordan Howard's, I feel like has been washed up for three years and somehow he's having one of the best years of his career with the 2020. Right. A real, a real renaissance season. Yeah. Um, and Jalen Hurts is obviously a a very good runner, but he's also been throwing pretty consistently down the stretch as well. I am intrigued by this because I think the Eagles are probably going to be fairly focused for a team that I don't think anybody really expected them to be in the playoffs. Um, and more than that, like this Bucks team, what are they without Antonio Brown? Like, not oh he's suspended he'll come back later like they, they he's he's done he's gone mm-hmm. like they still have Mike Evans but they lost Chris Godwin earlier in the year mm-hmm. the weird thing is they have two really great tight ends that they're just like nah we're just not going to use them like they have they have OJ Howard and Cameron Bray and they just choose not to use them which is bizarre to me but they also have guys like Tyler Johnson and Scotty Miller who are Scotty potentially Miller. potentially good players that again I. I don't know what to expect from them because Brady just doesn't hasn't thrown their way a whole lot. So I don't really know what to make of this this Bucks team. And even though a Todd Bowles defense is always going to be good against the run, this is a very tough uh, yep. run game to defend. And the Eagles played the Bucks earlier in the year. That was a one score game, and that was before the Eagles started committing to the run. So I think this is a potentially tough game for the Bucks to play. And I don't think anybody's going to really anticipate it being a tough game. So strap yourselves in. This something, something, something might be might be brewing here. Ooh, I think it'll be a tough game, right? I I, I don't foresee a Buccaneers blowout here. Uh, but that that's really all I hope for in any playoff game that the Bills aren't involved in, right? Is I just want <laughs> you want to, entertainment. I, I want to have yeah. a reason to watch. Yeah. Uh, in the in the fourth quarter. Um, the, the playoff game I might be most excited for, actually, like the Bills, obviously I'm excited for it, but like I'm nervous and I'm going to be oh, anxious yeah. the whole time. So the game I'm just excited to sit down and watch is Bengals Raiders. That's yes. going to be an incredible game uh, because the Bengals, I think, objectively, right, are the better team, better quarterback, yeah. better, pretty, they're, they're the better team. Um, but I, I. <laughs> It's just going to be a close game because one, that's how the playoffs are. And two, that's just the Raiders this year. The Raiders have this team of destiny feel 
that like they are going to be a tough out. Bengals should win. I think Bengals will win, uh, but that's going to be a good game that comes yeah. down to the fourth quarter, I'm sure. Also intrigued in Niners, Cowboys. That's my upset pick. Uh, Cowboys mm. are at home, but I, I think the Niners, uh, I don't know what the spread is, but I uh, uh, bet Niners maybe. The Niners are tricky just because Debo Samuel is a god. Essentially, mm -hmm. he's True. just an I absurd agree. player. That is, he w people talk about unicorns, especially like with Josh Allen or whatever. Debo Samo is a unicorn. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's, it's crazy that he fell to that team in that draft the way they did, and he's just absolutely crazy. He's a he's their best receiver and their best running back. He is. It's 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 crazy. He is it top be ten, maybe top ten in the NFL at both. Yeah. Honestly, like it's, I just I, I remember watching his film uh, in 20 it was would have been 2019 in the lead up to that draft. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, this is a Dable player like this is mm. this is Dable would make the most out of this dude. He would be incredible. Uh, unfortunately, the Bills didn't get his hand on him, but Kyle <laughs> Shanahan did. Yeah, uh, took what he did at South Carolina has just multiplied it by 100. I, I never thought we would see any player in the NFL have this role and succeed at it as well as Debo Cause, Samuel. Because, like, the first couple weeks, it was the same thing. It was like, oh, this dude is just, like, going off. And it mm -hmm. was like, okay, how sustainable is this? Uh, turns out, very. Yeah. <laughs> I, Debo is so yeah. fun to watch. So and, again. The, 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 the Niners against the Cowboys, that'll be that'll definitely be a very interesting game that could also be an upset game. Um, I don't know if that actually happens, but – well, um, probably I mean, won't, but it's same, same sort of thing with the Eagles and the, the Bucks. I don't know if that actually happens, but it, it's interesting to, to, to see. And and going back to the, to the Raiders and the Bengals, I don't think I've ever seen a team that has had a more unforgettable season than the 2021 Raiders for good and bad reasons. But like their first game of the year was that insane overtime game against the Ravens where they should have won like three different times and ended up winning in just the weirdest way possible. Mm -hmm. And then they end the year in a game where everyone wanted them to tie and they somehow just fall their way forward into a win and a playoff berth. Bizarre, bizarre year for them. Um, I am a big Joe Burrow guy. I am super excited for... Bengals fans who haven't had a lot to root for in years past and to have somebody like that who is that exciting and is like genuinely a franchise altering player, mm -hmm. not just because he's a great quarterback, but because his personality is just like, I don't care how bad you guys were before I'm here now. So we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. And like, everyone believes that that's absurd. It's absurd. Um, So I, I'm very much looking forward to that game. That's going to be a fun, fun game. And I'm also a, uh, a big Carl Massive stan. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love Joe Burrow. Just the whole, I love a, the confidence it, you are a, at that point, you're just coming off your rookie year in mm -hmm. which your team didn't look great. You looked solid, right. but your, your team wasn't great. And you go, you just tore your, what did he, MCL, ACL, both of them. Yeah. At least his ACL. I don't know if he had any others. But yeah. your team is in prime position to draft an offensive lineman, but you go to your. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if they have a GM in Cincinnati. It's a weirdly run organization. They, but they, they, they. He went to. Oh, what's his name? Duke Tobin. Duke Tobin. He's you go to all that, and you're like, no, I want. I want a wide receiver. I want Jamar oh, Chase. I want my wide receiver. Right, I, I want my guy. <laughs> and and one, they're like, okay, yeah, we'll do it. Yep. Two, he helps you win games. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the line still sucks, but like Jamar yeah. Chase is still incredible. Should probably might win rookie of the year. Probably should, should win, win rookie of the year. year. Ah, incredible story. Incredible yeah. what's going on in, in Cincinnati. Yeah. Electric even. Uh, so, yeah, I think that wraps up playoff talk. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this week's Cover One Roundup. We'll be back next week to discuss the Bills playoff win. I don't know. Maybe. Um, or, or, playoff win. Let's, uh, let's say it. Playoff win. Playoff win. Uh, also on Friday on the, I don't know if it's been announced uh playoff preview shift, but uh, if, if it hasn't <laughs> surprise, um, but yes, you will see um, us next week. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow cover one on Twitter at cover one on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all the social medias uh, cover one is there. 
uh, with some variation of cover one and a hyphen in, in most of them. Uh, yeah. so, uh, at points, two hyphens. Um, so uh, also check out the website. Check out uh, coverone.net. Uh, consider subscribing to Cover One Premium. There you will have access to the Cover One Premium Slack where you can talk to all of us on a regular basis. Also, it's a great uh, community of Bills fans. Always have great conversations going on over there in the Slack about the Bills, life, general stuff, whatever you want to talk about. I'm sure it's being discussed over there in the Cover One Premium Slack. So check it out if you are interested. Uh, make sure to, again, check out Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code COVER1. Make sure to follow David on Twitter at DFoxy, at DFoxy, F A U X Y, A D. You can follow me <laughs> on Twitter at Kyle Slaggy. Uh So thank you guys for watching. We will talk to you again later. Bye.